All right, folks, so in case you hadn't yet heard, Reuters reported about a week ago that Six Flags was pursuing a deal to purchase Cedar Fair. And then just a day or two later, the news came out that Cedar Fair had rejected that offer. Now, I had thought, based on the reactions, I had seen that fans of Cedar Fair Parks would be celebrating, but after the news broke that the deal wouldn't go through, I started seeing a puzzling amount of comments lamenting the failed proposal. It's almost as if the internet yeah, responds to everything, everything in a response or something. something. Well, I won't disagree that there certainly would have been some upsides to this. On balance, I feel really comfortable saying that if your home park is a Six Flags park, or especially if it's a Cedar Fair park, this would have most likely ended up badly for you. In this video, I'm going to explain why I think that's the case. So let's get into it. Here we go. While maybe not the most important consideration here, if you've ever been to a park like Kings Island, Cedar Point, Knott's Berry Farm, Carowinds, or Kings Dominion, you'll know that while not up to Disney standards or anything, Cedar Fair parks tend to look pretty nice. There's a certain standard this company seems to hold itself to in terms of the way they present themselves. And part of this is the fact that when you go to a park like Kings Island, you aren't constantly smacked in the face with branding at every corner. And while I know there are some of you out there that will say this kind of thing doesn't matter, there are a lot of us that wouldn't be too excited to see Mountain Dew presents Mystic Timbers, Diamondback sponsored by Totino's Pizza Rolls, or The Beast brought to you by Snickers. It's no secret in the enthusiast world that the Six Flags parks are filled to the brim with advertisements, with even some of their roller coaster trains being wrapped in branding. I really do think a park like Kings Island or Carowinds, among many others, would suffer a bit of a decline in atmosphere if this kind of thing ran rampant in those parks the way it does in parks run by Six Flags. You can argue this point if you want, but I think deep down, no one really wanted to see this kind of change. Now, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair. Some of the most revered roller coasters in the US at least have been built in Six Flags parks. Many consider El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure to be among the best wooden roller coasters ever built. King Ka in the same park is currently the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster. Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain is often cited as the best flying coaster out there. And just this year, Max Force opened at Six Flags Great America, and that thing looks awesome. I really can't wait to ride that one. Just a few weeks ago, it was announced that Six Flags Great Adventure would be receiving their first major coaster edition in years when Jersey Devil opens next spring. Here's the thing, though. Some of those coasters I just mentioned opened before. Six Flags went bankrupt back in 2009. Since then, Six Flags has been adding a whole lot of crap that no one really wants to their parks. The biggest Cedar Fair parks, on the other hand, have been enjoying a boom of awesome, unique additions over the last 10 years or so. Can anyone really say they want to see any of the parks in the Cedar Fair chain getting the clones and mediocre flat rides Six Flags has been adding lately over what Cedar Fair has been dishing out? If there's any big thing that people criticize Cedar Fair for, it would be that even though they build a lot of quality attractions at their favorite parks, there are quite a few in the chain that don't receive the kind of attention places like Kings Island do. How do you think the company becoming even larger would affect your home park? A company as big as what I'll call Cedar Flags would be likely spread so thin that no one park, with the exception of maybe Cedar Point, would receive 
enjoyed the kind of capital investments at least the big Cedar Fair parks enjoy these days. While I don't know the specifics, of course, of what the company and its financial situation would have been, I feel fairly safe saying this would be the case, is the number of parks that would now be part of this ridiculously huge chain just seems like it would be too large to continually add additions of the caliber of parks like Kings Island and Carowinds have been getting lately. The only time a monopoly tends to be a good thing is if you're actually playing Monopoly and you're the one winning. Or, I guess, it's also good if you happen to look exactly like Dr. Evil and it's a real-life Monopoly that you yourself own. For everyone else, a Monopoly is almost never good news. Did anyone else notice that Windows used to suck way worse before Apple got back into the game. Don't at me, kids. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you obviously didn't spend enough time looking at this in high school. Trust me, it used to be way worse. If Six Flags and Cedar Fair were to become one, like some kind of unholy Dragon Ball Z character, you're looking at one company owning the vast majority of parks that any coaster enthusiast would care about. What reason do they really have to improve? They would own almost everything. They've got you exactly where they want you. Yeah, they'll keep adding new stuff. Kings Island would get a free spin. Carowinds would get a free spin. Canada's Wonderland would get a free spin. King's Dominion would get a free spin. Knott's Berry Farm would get a free spin. California's Great Adventure would get a free spin. Everyone gets a free spin. If this happened, who, realistically, would this company be competing with? Disney? Oh, what's that? You don't have $5,000 to take your family on a Disney vacation? That's too bad. Guess you'll be going with six flags then. Are you enjoying this video? If so, consider subscribing so that you never miss any future content. If you think I'm doing a good job, smash that like button so that I know what kind of video you guys like to see. With that, let's get back to it. Look, let's be fair here. Had Six Flags been successful in their bid to take over Cedar Fair, it wouldn't have been entirely a bad thing. Almost nothing ever is. As many have pointed out, this may have had a positive effect on some of the parks Cedar Fair owns that receive very little investment at all. Like, well, Michigan's Adventure, which I'll probably continue to bring up as an example whenever we're talking about something sad. Would it have been pretty cool to be able to get into the vast majority of thrill parks with a single pass? Yeah, that would have been nice. And that membership program Six Flags offers does seem to have some pretty cool benefits. Now we've had a lot of fun here talking crap about Six Flags, haven't we? But there are a few Six Flags parks on my list of places I really want to go. I don't hate Six Flags, but I do really like the way Cedar Fair has been running my home park at Kings Island. I know that in some circles I'm in the minority on that, and that some people really hate Cedar Fair, but at the end of the day, it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't. And that's why I'm glad this deal didn't go through. Anyway, guys, that all clear means I'm up, up, and out of here. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day here on YouTube. See you on the next one.